So we've talked about product development in a virtual environment. Let's talk about physical products. So the first thing that comes to mind is actually Zappos Shoes because they're such a great company and there's so many things to learn from them, but it's a physical product. We also in Nudge Village have Kuru. Uh, physical products can also be the CDs and videotapes. Um, you got clothing, you got jewelry that people are selling on Etsy. And, and so you have a lot of different options um, in creating products, tangible products. The strengths for, to this is you can gain a huge market from a niche. And so you take Zappos. These are not the most amazing shoes in the world, but they're a certain type of shoe. There's a certain story associated with them. People are willing to pay more for it and be involved in that story. And that goes along with the loyal followers. These niches can be big money makers. Um, you can implement your actual design ideas in physical products. And so that's an amazing thing, right? If you're part of larger organizations or part of franchise, there are specific products you must stick to. But this, you can actually influence the design and what its outcomes are. And so that's a very creative, engaging development process. The weaknesses is to this is always inventory, right? Um, if people don't buy, you're stuck with all of this stuff. Also, the supply chain. There's so many different things that go on. So, for example, to create a pair of shoes, everybody is not creating the entire shoe. No one knows how to create the entire shoe in some cases, right? If there's a rubberized sole, it might be made somewhere. If there's a leather top, it might be made somewhere. Someone else makes the shoelaces. Someone else sews them together. There's pieces and parts. And so if any part of that supply chain breaks down, that can impact your entire product line. There can be a high upfront cost depending on the cost of the physical goods. And as an example, uh, my aunt has a business in Thailand. And all of a sudden in, in the year 2010, 11, and 12, uh, women started to wear these feather hair accessories. Well, the, feather, the price of the feathers went up in the general marketplace. This impacted her business because they created... Uh, the tie, they tie flies for people that fish, right? So all of those, there's these feathers on there. So the price of those went up, and so the price of their product had to go up, and they sold less. And so there was, it was very difficult because who knew that someone's woman's hair accessory would impact the price of the flies that fishermen need to use um, to bait their fish. So very interesting things to consider. Uh, and this is why a lot of people have gone over to foreign countries to get their goods produced, which causes a lot of controversy, right, in the United States because they're going out of the U.S., but it's cheaper. So opportunities in this area. There's just unlimited potential for growth. No one's stopping you. Um, and if you can get things mass-produced um, and start reducing those upfront costs and increase the cost savings to customers, you can have a good thing going. Um, one of the issues right now is the threat is with a down economy – is your product a luxury or a staple? Um, now, the interesting thing is in the down economy, some of the very wealthy and some people realize, oh, I would rather do without certain things so I can have certain things. So a great example is you got people that they will give up new clothes, they will give up living in a nice house, they will give up all these things in order to have like a new iPhone or to have a uh, cable so they'll give up certain things to have certain luxuries. So to figure out, is, is yours a luxury that can last through a down economy? Um, and, of course, the threat is inventory. One of, the big, <laughs> one of the big threats also is the copycats, right? And we have a lot of that, um, unfortunately, in some of the BRIC countries that we uh, talk about, Brazil, Russia, India, China. They know they can do it cheaper, and they will. And, um, and often do a pretty darn good job of it. So these are some things to think about with physical product development.